So hello everyone. Um, so if you are here to see the talk uh, of Mike about revolutioning IOC, sharing MIS, BMQ, power, smart workflow, blah, blah, technology, it's a long title. Um, it's not going to be that. The, unfortunately, were, they were not able to join us today, so I will be replacing them. Uh, so feel free to leave the room if you are not interested. Uh, I won't hold the grudge on you. All right, a small disclaimer before we, we start this session. So what I will be showing on screen and during this talk, uh, everything will be using live production systems, so I hope I won't be subject to too much of uh, the Murphy's Law, but it won't hurt me too much. Um, and also I was challenged to make this talk, uh, that usually is a workshop, a two hour workshop, I was challenged to make it a 30 minute talk. Um, so apologies in advance if that goes fast. Uh, but anyway, if you have questions and we don't have time at the end, feel free to catch me later and we can continue on that. All right, a few words about me. Uh, so I've been working at Circle for the past almost eight years and I'm part of the MISP uh, project core development team where my fir first pull request was in March 2018 uh, and I also love video games. But since March uh, 2018, I've been adding a lot of Easter egg, uh, one for each of these games, so if you feel like it, you can uh, check the source code and find them all. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is just way too much time I spent playing these games, and if I would have spent this time developing Myth, I think the UI would be much better than it is right now. <laughs> all right, um, so just to paint you um, a picture of uh, what I was doing when things happen. So the other day I was just peacefully, you know, developing like coding, listening to music. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. Um, and while I was developing a new features, a colleague just came over um, and uh, he asked me, like he interrupted me, of course, eh? and then he asked me to encode something in this. So he was working on a case on AL framework. This is one of our tools that we'll see a bit more later on. And I won't say how he got it, but he got a QR code uh, that was automatically decoded using that AL framework tool. And this QR code leads to an onion. And when you go on that onion, uh, you basically have more onions. And um, so what I can tell you is that these onions, we really needed to, to share them. And so I was tasked by this colleague to like go on this onion, contextualize it a bit, encode this in MISP, and then share it with uh, the affected parties. But why would I spend 10 minutes doing that job manually when I can spend two hours automating it? <laughs> um, so, a few words about this QR code stuff. If you're interested in learning more about this L project, the tool that we develop, uh, feel free to join that lightning tool given by Aurelia. Anyway, so a few words for those who don't know what MISP is. Um, so, MISP. We have a banner there. Uh, MISP is basically a trade intelligence sharing platform, also called TISP. And uh, I would say it's quite a mature project uh, that was started in like 2012. Uh, and it has been following a community-driven development. So if you want to be part of this uh, wall of fame, uh, really pay attention to that presentation because it will give you all the tools and knowledge to contribute to the project and be part of that beautiful banner. Um, so MISP um, is being used by many people, so it's been deployed by CSERT, SOX, uh, researchers, law enforcement, sharing communities, uh, and so on, and it's basically used worldwide to share trend and sharing information. All right, but what can you use actually MISP? Uh, what can I use it for? So the main idea is you have many sources of uh, data. It can be CSV, feeds, your analyst, tools, or other MISP instances that can feed that data into MISP. MISP will then normalize that data so that you can deal with it, potentially enrich that data, and then you offer all the tools for collaboration so that you can, like user, he can report false positives, do proposals, uh, create opinions, and so on. So that at the end, you finally can export that data to your productive tools for firewalls, uh, IGS, IPS systems, case management, and so on. So a bit more of advertising, a few tools that are on the screen, um, like Kunai, Flow Intel. We will have short lightning tool to explain to you what, what it is. Feel free to join them. Um, and if you want to see some horror stories of one of our analysts, feel free to join the talk of Deborah that will sh share with you some horrors she saw. 
Anyway, so this talk is about automating things, so let's quickly have a look at the automation ecosystem in MISP. So we have different ways to integrate automation. One of them could be the zero MQ. It's basically a pub sub uh, messaging system where MISP send messages of stuff that is happening on the platform, and you can have script that consume these messages uh, and execute additional action. Uh, we obviously have an API, a RESTful API in MISP, but also the Python library uh, that can be used to interact with MISP. And we have two others, which are the MISP modules and the workflows. These are the ones we will be focusing today. The MISP module to provide enrichment services and the MISP workflow to provide lightweight automation to your system. So let's quickly have a look at MISP modules, what they are. So the main usage of these modules is to simply provide an enrichment system to MISP. So you basically have a value, like this one, 999, uh, and you use the system uh, to have more information about that value. So in, in this case, I'm using the module give me geolocation.py, and from that input, 9999, I get an output which is the geolocation of that IP address. And if I think that this information is relevant, I can decide to save that information inside MISP so that I can further share that information with other people. So for the workflows, we currently have 120 modules, and after this presentation, we will have 121, because we will be developing one live. Uh, notable modules that you can find on the screen could be like uh, Virus Total, Shodan, Abuse IPDB, uh, GeoIP Location, Who is Lookup, DNS Lookups, and so on. Um, yeah, and these modules, they basically have a very simple uh, API interface where it's very easy to integrate with, but you will see that in a minute. Now for workflows, uh, it's a system to provide quick and easy automation in MISP. So you have a set of triggers uh, that you have on the screen uh, that can be used to uh, execute various actions, such as sending notification, uh, modifying the data on the fly, uh, training script, so you can do a bunch of things. Um, and the main concept of these triggers is you have at one point an action that can happen on the platform. For example, an attribute is being saved, an event is being published, uh, a tag is being attached. So all of these events are triggers that once it happens in the application, they can run a workflow. So this is what a workflow looks like in MISP. Um, so you can basically create a workflow using the, the visual data flow programming interface that we have. Uh, it's really easy to use. You have just blocks that you can drag and drop and link them together. And of course, in this workflow, you can use MISP modules. So you can see where this is going now. Um, but the bottom line between, uh, well, for MISP workflows and the MISP modules is that it's, these systems are extremely flexible uh, and it makes adding new tools and integration very fast without needing extensive coding knowledge or even skills. All right, that's it for the quick introduction. Now, what's the plan for this presentation? So, we have an onion address, or many onion address. We want to get more information about that onion. So, what we will do is to use the enrichment system. So, our first task will be to write an enrichment module called Onion Lookup. Then, now we have a way to have new information thanks to that Onion Lookup module. What we want to do is to automate uh, that step so that we don't even need to, to do anything. The system will automatically detect that we have a new Onion address that needs to be enriched. So what we'll do as a second step is to design a workflow to remove any user interaction. And what kind of interaction do we want to have First one would be to automatically enrich any onion when they enter the tool. Second one would be to restrict the sharing if an, uh, an onion contains unwanted content. What I mean by unwanted content, if you are familiar with, uh, let's call it the dark web, uh, they are hosting a lot of nasty stuff over there, like uh, child exploitation materials, and this is the type of content that we don't want to share at all, uh, obviously. So if we detect that an onion is hosting that kind of materials, we automatically want to restrict the sharing. And this we want to automate. And the last step will be that if a specific tag is added, uh, we want to warn users that 
this tag has been created, uh, or in our case, so we could warn them using a chat application, but in our case, I will uh, show off a bit of one of our, our tools that we develop at Circle, and I will simply create a task in a case, uh, a case management system tool. All right, so now we have our marvelous plan. Now it's time to do the doing, right? So the different step that we'll do, step one, we'll simply take the pre-made skeleton that we have for these modules and duplicate it. Step two, we'll modify the onion, uh, look up modules, so that, I mean, it's time to write some code. Step three, simply restart the server. And last step, we'll test it, right? But just before I start, how will I get information about an onion? For that, I will use one of the service uh, provided by Circle called Onion Lookup. So Onion Lookup is a new project. You can join on this page, the QR code to join, uh, and well, the QR code links to, to, to the link just below it. So if you're interested, feel free to, to scan it. Uh, basically, Onion Lookup website allows you to paste an onion, and you will get information about it. So it's as simple as this. All right. So let's do the doing. So these are the two onions um, I will be testing against. One is called archive something, and the other one is called misp test loot something. So start the service. Server is running. Very good. Next, I have the skeleton that is already provided in the repository, the misp module repository. So what I will do is simply duplicate it, rename it, uh, onion lookup.py. Good. And now I need to actually implement it. Just before, I will show you what it contains, quickly. So this is the entire script. At the beginning, we have just some import and meta information about that module. Then you have a function called do stuff that we will implement. And all of these are functions that you don't even need to touch. Uh, these are just functions to handle the messaging. So when MISP do the enrichment, this script will receive a message, parse it, execute the do stuff function, and returns it to MISP. So this part you don't even need to touch. <coughs> so first thing I will do, I hope you can all see the screen, um, is modify the, the meta information. So we have the imputes. This is where you specify what type of attribute is going to enter the system. So in our case, it's not going to be any of this. What we want to have are onion address. So that the modules can only process onion addresses. So that's what we do. Then some module information, MISP, MISP module using the MISP standard skeleton. I could just say uh, MISP standard, uh, query the onion lookup service. Module type, I will keep them both. There are no configuration for this module, so I can just remove this. And I'll have to implement the do stuff function. So what I want to do is to enrich an onion. So I could call enrich onion. We'll just rename it. And what this function received is a misp event that we'll have to return. So in this misp event, we'll create the data that we want to be returned to MISP. And we also receive the attribute, so the original attribute that is being enriched. So in this case, it will be the onion address. So first thing I want to do is to get the onion address from the attribute. So it's basically, it's just the value of the attribute. Then what do I want to do? First, I want to get information about that, um, that onion, right? So I will do onion info, get info, and I will pass simply the onion address. Next, what I want to create is a MISP object that contains all the information I know about this onion. Uh, so I will just do this MISP object, and then uh, create object, and I will pass the onion info. And that's pretty much it. Just need to add it to the event. MISP event .add object, MISP object. And that's it. So now we have two functions to implement. First one is get info that received an onion address. And for that, I will be using to perform um, an HTTP query, I will be using request 
Um, so it's going to be info. Now it's complaining that I'm missing an import, so I will import it. Now I have to get the URL. So I told you I would be using Onion Lookup. So Onion Lookup, I will quickly show you an example. Just take one of the onion, do a query. And you can see we have information about it. So we have some tags and we have some known title that were hosted at that location and some temporal information. But what we also have is the open API specification. You can see it's very simple to use. If you want to get information about an onion, you just go on that endpoint, paste the onion, and you have information in JSON. Perfect. That's exactly what you want. So what I will do is simply take that URL, go back there, and we keep everything but the onion, because what we want to have there is onion address. Good. And it's a get request that we need to perform. That's okay. So okay, what we will do now is simply to return Excuse me? Oh, right. That would have been, well, <laughs> not a big deal. Because we would have seen it right away, right? That's part of the game. Anyway, thank you. That saved me 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. Um, all right, so JSON is a function. And that should be it, right? Okay. Next function that we need to implement is basically the one that creates an object from all of this information. Uh, so it's going to be onion info. And what do we have as information is basically this response. So that I can quickly see what we have there. So first thing is we'll create a misp object. It's complaining about the import. And I will also need an attribute, so let's clear it now. And what um, we'll, we do is simply add some attributes to that object. But what kind of object are we dealing with right now? I will be using this uh, Tor Reader service object. This object has the title, like the known title for that onion address, uh, first in last information, the address of that onion, the language, and the first in last in. Yeah. Okay, so the name of the template is store hidden service. So just create the uh, misp object like this. And then I need to add attributes. So first thing I will do is, let's say to add the actual onion. So the onion is address, and then I can add the value, so it will be onion info ID. It's ID, yes. Um, now I can add some uh, languages, and we can see that it's a multiple field, so we can add many languages, and fortunately, because this is an array. So what I can do is simply for languages in onion info languages, and then this object that add attributes. And then if I'm not mistaken, it is singular. Yes, it is. Uh, onion info. And then, no, it's not onion info. It's language, because we have many languages. Uh, I can also add the titles. So we do this. Take the titles. It's singular as well. Okay, and we still need to add the first in, last in, and the tags. So first in and last in, this is very easy to add. Simply do this object of first in. Oops, I need info. First in, and for the last in. Should be good. And now the tags. For the tags, it's a slightly different syntax. For tag in. Onion info tags, and then it's mis not misp object because you cannot add tags on objects. I will add the tags on the onion address. So, onion attribute, add tag, and then it's going to be tag. And that should be it. Return misp object. Okay, 
Last thing, I also want to tag the original attribute because this is important. So what I will do is to quickly load uh, original attribute. So original attribute is the attribute being enriched. So I will quickly load this attribute that we got into a misp attribute object. Uh, so it's going to be from dict. So this is some PyMisp stuff. And then I can finally add tags. Uh, and actually, good old copy pasta. Um, and finally, attribute happen. Add the attributes to the event. Should be good. So shall we try? Let's see. All right. So I have my two attributes saved there. We try to. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should restart the server. That was one of the steps, huh? right? Restart. Forgot. And it's still not working. Great. So let's quickly check in the plugins. And I don't see it. Uh, aye, aye, aye. So let's quickly see. Start server, expansion. Ah, yeah, yeah, Murphy, Murphy. What did you do to me? Okay, get rid of this first. So let's check you're correctly in the expansion. So relative in port with known parents. It's always when you want it to work that it doesn't, right? <sighs> that was a risky move. Hmm? All right, let's quickly check something because I did some modification to make it load faster. No, no, that I did some modification to make it load faster. Um, Yes. This one. Three minutes. All right. <laughs> so it was supposed to work, but uh, being under pressure, let's just suppose it does, right? Uh, anyway, I wouldn't have time to, to finish it. So, so what we should have had is basically when you do the enrichment, uh, when you when you change uh, when you do the enrichment of this onion, you would have the information directly in your event. And so the next step of that automation task that we wanted to do is to add a workflow to remove user interaction. Right. So the first thing that we wanted to do is to restrict the sharing if an onion contains unwanted content. And this I don't need the enrichment module because I can always cheat. So what we wanted to do is if we have this specific tag. Uh, return when we do the enrichment, we want to restrict uh, the sharing. The second step was to automatically enrich any onion that enter the system, and the th third step was to uh, create a task in our case management tool. And so let's start with uh, this one. So to mat automatically adjust the distribution of the attribute to your organization only whenever uh, this tag is being attached. And you can see that this tag is indeed being attached. If I take this test onion and I do, I run it on our onion lookup. Hold on. See, it's live system. No, this is not the correct onion. 
See, we have it. This is a test. It doesn't actually host uh, child exploitation content, but this one returns that tag. It's just for testing. Okay. So from that uh, thing that we want to have, we can convert this into pseudocode, and so this is what it would look like in a workflow. So when a tag is attached to an attribute, if that tag is equals to, to that tag, uh, we change the distribution to your Jorganelli. So let's see how we could do it in MISP. So you take your MISP instance, uh, you load the workflow tag attached after save, and it says that the workflow is disabled, so we'll quickly enable it. There you go. So what we want to do is basically, when a tag is attached to an attribute, I check. Is the attribute being tagged with this one? If it's tagged with uh, child exploitation, then what do I want to do? Oops. I want to change the distribution. So attribute distribution operation, set it to organization. I can save. Now we'll go in my event, and I will attach a tag manually. I would have used the enrichment module, but things are how they are. So if I attach this one, you can see that the tag was attached, and the distribution changed. So it was very easy to do. All right, so that was the first task. Second task, which I cannot test, uh, so this is the, the final result. Second task, which I cannot test because the enrichment module is not working, that's too bad, but it was basically to automatically enrich any onion that entered the system, right? So I will quickly skip these slides and go back to the last one. Uh, almost, almost. Uh, there we go, is to attach tags uh, that create, when they are attached, they, they create a task in, uh, in our case management system. Uh, and to do it is, again, extremely simple. And I'll actually, we, I will show it how it looks like. It's basically when you check for the tag, if the tag contains a credit card, like it is there, if it contains it, uh, you call the webhook module, which is just a module that allows you to issue HTTP requests on any services. And basically, you put the URL, the content to be sent, and it will create uh, the task in the case management system. So, the way forward, uh, and few things that we want to improve uh, regarding workflows. Uh, we were not able to, sh to, to see that part, but one of the workflow might cause a recursion, what I mean by that is a workflow might run itself again and again, and so we had to introduce a way to prevent that. That was part of the slide I've skipped. Uh, so this is one of the things that we want to introduce in the system, so to show a warning that this workflow might, co might, be a might cause a recursion. Another one is another type of workflow, which is called a triggerless module, uh, so that you could create workflow that you execute manually, like an analyst would click on a button to run that workflow on the event, similar to what we have with publishing. Or that workflow could be run by another workflow. And the third one is a type of uh, time-based workflow that we would call scheduled workflow. Uh, well, the, mail, the basic idea is you create a workflow that would be run on a regular basis based on the time uh, that you set. And that's basically it. Uh, so now you have more or less all the knowledge on how you can contribute uh, to, to the MIS project. So if you want to write new MIS modules, it's quite easy. You can access the repository uh, using that QR code. If you design some crazy workflows, uh, uh, you can always create a blueprint of that workflow and share it with the community. Um, we have a repository meant for that called MIS workflow blueprints that contains around 15 uh, workflow essentially made, made for uh, your curation pipeline so that you remove false positive from your uh, data and so on. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. If you want to learn more or see the rest of the presentation. Yeah. Outside the door. Outside the door, please. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sammy.